why do millions supposedly outgrow stuttering? A few years ago, a stuttering researcher at the University of Edinburgh, who wrote the foreword to one of my books, he is an ex-stutterer who used our methods, told me that according to some studies, 5% of children stutter, but 80% of the 5% outgrow it. So four of the 5% outgrow it, leaving only 1% of adults stuttering. If that's true, 320 million people have simply outgrown stuttering. Recently, when I Googled, when I Googled, does stuttering go away? The answer was, in most children who stuttered, the phase passes and speech returns to normal within three to four years. Now, are either of these statements backed up by formal studies? Apparently not. They are simply best guesses. Regardless, it fascinates me that many children do outgrow, simply outgrow stuttering. So my question for the group here is, why do you think 80% of stuttering children simply outgrow their stuttering? That's my question. I think that's a great question. I think uh, most of the children are able to out outgrow it because they have supportive parents who identified the issue much earlier. And uh, they, they treat the child at an earlier stage. So that could be one of the reasons. And the second is the child's mind is not reinforcing stuttering, which means that the child's environment is good. It's, it's encouraging and it, it's not traumatizing the child. The child is not undergoing any sort of humiliation. And that is why he or she is not reinforcing stuttering in their mind. So that could be one of the reasons. I think that uh, if you begin to if you begin to stutter as a child, like at ages between three to six, which is the ages in which most people begin to stutter, um, if you have a lot of bad incidents, and by bad incident I mean just like you said, Lee, um, just like you said, that you have incidents where you are humiliated by your speech, well, that is going to cause a huge impact on your self-esteem and it's going to make everything worse. And if your dad and your mom, they are always trying to, to say you don't do that, don't get stuck on words, don't do, so they are not trying to help you, it makes it worse. But just like Lee, just like you have done in, in your coaching sessions with, with children, if you if you are trying to be supportive and you teach them that speaking can be fun by speaking slowly with passion you know and all that stuff well that is going to help them a lot and that can help them to outgrow their their speech problem my first thought was you know we know that that stuttering is a habit and as we grow our habits change and once we hit adulthood it's a lot harder to change our habits and i think that is the exact same thing with stuttering, where when you're six, seven, and eight, your habits are changing, you know, week to week, month to month. And when that's how a lot of kids just grow out of it is because everything in their life is changing. But as we know, when you hit adulthood, suddenly just putting something in a different location in your house is stressful because that's your, you know, you're changing a habit. So I think, I think it just gets harder and harder to change things the older you get. But that's. I'll throw in. Uh, the reasons that, that occurred to me. I would say, number one, children, without thinking about it, use avoidance as much as needed to avoid appearing speech disabled if they're feeling any embarrassment whatsoever. Many of them feel no embarrassment, so they don't use avoidance at all. But those who do, I think, use some avoidance. I think others discover some of our crutches, um, for example, such as using synonyms, similar words or phrases, skipping a, a letter, 
uh, telling a story about it, changing the subject, changing the thought. I think quite a few of them combine um, a, a tool or two that they've used with avoidance. I've often felt, I'm not a fan of avoidance, but if I hadn't used avoidance, I'd be stuttering to this day. I had to use some. Because the golden rule to beat stuttering is you can't humiliate yourself. And until you stop humiliating yourself, you're going to stutter all your life. So you've got to find a way to stop doing that. And if that takes a little avoidance on occasion, okay. Talking less is a form of avoidance too. So I think children naturally do what comes naturally. And I think Moise's point is a very good one too. You know, that they're, they're, they're not thinking much about words. M most children start stuttering because they talk too fast. And then they get embarrassed by mistakes they've made and repeats become dominant and repeats grow into blocks. So, and, and but that's part of it too. So another thing is that um, a lot of people do not have lives that make them talk under pressure. They don't feel pressure with their families many in many cases. And they don't have lives that require them to talk under pressure. I have found, I can't tell you how many people, I don't know what the percentage is, half at least of the people I've ever coached in stuttering started stuttering in school. I did when they were called on to say something or in many cases to read something aloud. Teachers meaning to help, then say, oh, I'll make little Lee talk more so he'll get over his speech problem. And that becomes more stuttering. The more they make me talk, the more I stutter. And stuttering is a, is a primary place uh, where, where it, uh, a fertile ground for stuttering is school. So in any event, some kids don't get called on much in school. And therefore, they don't have the occasion to be embarrassed in school. In any event, my guess is over time, it's a combination of avoidance, some simple crutches, and the stutter habit gets weaker and weaker. And when they don't, when they're not forced to stutter in their life, suddenly they don't, the problem simply goes away. The, the problem with it, I get a lot of letters from parents saying, would you help us? Is it a good idea to work on my son or daughter's stuttering? And they're under age seven. And I tell them that um, I think some attention, attention to the problem is a good thing. But I think people under the age of 12 are too young to really learn our methods. So the best thing for them to do is read aloud with their parents. If they can't read aloud to listen to reading aloud and to try and learn reading aloud from their parents. And for parents to speak slower and use more pronunciation with their children. And I cannot tell you how many children have stopped stuttering simply when the parents slowed down their own speech and spoke better. And rather than talk about stuttering to the child, which makes them think, oh, I have a speech problem. We don't talk about it. We use hand motions. We want them to slow down. We go like that. If we want them to stop, we go like that. And we, and we don't say, don't say the word that way. We don't do that. If they mispronounce metaphysics, they say metapapapepe or something. You say, oh, I like metaphysics. Just use it yourself in a, in a smooth, easy way and never discuss it. 